the same week as Budget 2023 is delivered in Parliament, Singapore is lifting almost all its COVID-19 related measures. It's a sign of a turning point for the island as the pandemic years go into the history books. But with the opening of the economy has come a new set of challenges for businesses. Number one is the manpower, right? Um, obviously, with, uh, with the opening of, uh, of the economy, I think a lot of the workers who have, been, who have not been back, they've gone back and some of them may not choose to come back for a couple of reasons. That will lead us to the next problem, the rising costs um, you know, of, of uh, the city itself. So we know that rental has gone up uh, on the average about 30%. And uh, you know the, our average um, so inflation been six percent. So I think more more and more of them are just weighing the pros and cons of working in Singapore versus in your home country, and uh, and that and uh, because of that, I think even if uh, a lot of them who come back and choose to work in Singapore may demand a higher salary. That includes uh, our local workforce. Right? So that's uh, translated into immediate. Um, what are called business costs. With many companies having a tough time employing and retaining workers, experts hope the government will be able to implement some out-of-the-box solutions to help companies. Like for example, the gig economy, there's quite a lot of uh, resources that's over there and talent and resources and people over there, right? And uh, a lot of businesses are also looking at how they can tap into that market and then hire. And also if you look at the, uh, over uh, the COVID and the pandemic, uh, some of the gig workers may find that um, uh, being a gig worker, there's uh, le less protection and uh, there may be a bit of challenge. So I think that this is an area that maybe we can look at uh, supporting, right? And whether a large gig uh, workforce may be something that's good overall for the economy or we could actually uh, support uh, the businesses to help some of these gig workers transit into a, um, you know, a corporate world uh, as a PME. One sector that has been the hardest hit by this manpower crunch is the hospitality and F&B sector. To find foreign labours is very tough, let alone finding local Singaporeans to fill this job. Uh, so, you know, really we hope that the, the government will consider to maintain the quota uh, as well as the workers' uh, WP levy for the next two years. So this will help us to continue to recruit for positions that is very difficult to be filled by Singaporeans. That will help us, I think. Amid this labour crunch, programmes to upskill workforces have helped businesses to make better use of the manpower that they have. During COVID, we partner with WSG to roll out job redesign and upskilling programme. We started with combining concierge with security. Uh, we send some members of our concierge team for security training. So upon completion of the training, they are licensed security officer. So now they can function both as concierge as well as security officer. Similarly, we send our security officer for uh, guest service training. We teach them and we coach them how to handle luggage, how to provide guest services. So by doing so, we are now able to combine these two roles. And once all is done, uh, we will not have just 10 concierge team members and 8 security. We now have 18 well-trained concierge and security team members that can do both functions. Key to growing the Singapore economy is creating a pipeline of talent, both locally and overseas. One such initiative is the Global Ready Talent Programme, or GRT, which offers young talent access to local and overseas internships and work opportunities in promising enterprises. Right now it's ready for young graduates, but I think government can consider um, uh, people at a more senior level, even at a PMATS level, right? Also, um, that now that their kids have grown up, they are ready to 
go into a, uh, uh, different countries to help companies grow their business in that sense. Another area where companies say they could use some help is when they're looking to set up operations abroad. The ROI for such an investment is usually long term and the spike in terms of investment, this is some part whereby that's probably one of the reasons why companies are reluctant to go, right? Because the ROI is not immediate, right? So perhaps if uh, the budget can have some help in this area, whether it's a relocation grant or some kind of a, of a, of a, a loans whereby company can tap on if they decide to shift some of the production overseas and explore overseas market. We see a lot more businesses looking to offshore some of their back office work. And in this particular aspect, we think that you know, if the government could support the businesses, if they could actually support training and development of, let's say, a manager that is going to be uh, holding a multi-regional uh, portfolio or a multicultural portfolio, so to speak, right? That would really uh, be able to level up the, the managerial capabilities of businesses and, and our, our staff in Singapore to actually deal with not just a Singapore staff, but, you know, a multi-regional staff. <music>